In this installment, we're going to be going over the MLB bet slate for Monday, July 8th. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef Dan. I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for our July 8th MLB Monday slate we got going on. But before we deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you follow on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Uh, right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 6.82 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K, and we are well on our way because you guys are showing up each and every single day. Uh, continue to like and comment. That's going to help the YouTube algorithm so we can grow to a broader audience. If you're not subscribed right now, you are 100% missing out on the community that we're building on YouTube and on Patreon as well. All right. And speaking of that Patreon, uh, we were pretty red hot on Sunday. Also, for the video, the video was red hot as well. We went six and two on all plays. I was getting messages and on the on the Saturday night video or the Sunday video, letting me know that hey, yo, these all these uh, money lines are coming in, and they were they were they were coming in. Uh, so we went six and two on last night's video. So we're, we're gonna try to continue to do that again, obviously. Um, for our two parlays I gave out to the community, one was Cardinals and Braves. That was a plus 194. That came through. Mets was one of my top plays. That came through as well. And then the other parlay was the Minnesota Twins and the Texas Rangers plus 204. That came through as well. So um, if you want to join up for uh the patreon remember that link is down below we have a great community you're going to get daily bets and you're going to get futures as well i already posted the uh the world series future that i have for this year so if you want to get connected get signed up sign up right now link down below i'm so excited to announce i am partner with BetStamp and sign up experts to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sportsbook in your area if you go to the link in the description down below, you will be directed to this page you see here. It automatically displays all available sports books in your area, plus their current promotions. For example, you can take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sports books you don't currently have and reap the rewards. Now let's get into the slate. So for Monday, we only have a seven game slate here. So I'm just going over the seven games. First game one here, PNC Park, Pittsburgh Pirates, 47, excuse me, 42 and 47, going up against the New York Mets, 44 and 44. Uh, for the New York Mets, they are, if you're looking at it right now, we have Pittsburgh Pirates as slight home favorites, very slight home favorites, minus 115, with the comeback of the New York Mets at a minus 105. So it's almost even here. Uh, total run set at eight and a half. For the public bet percentage, 68% of the bets, 52% of the money on these Pirates. So we're getting uh, some sharp money in public coming in on that Mets side here. That's why it's kind of 50-50. Uh, total runs, 83% of the bets, 80% of the money towards the over 8.5, okay? Uh, for the pitching matchup, interesting matchup here. Christian Scott, 0-2 with a 4.32 ERA. Going up against Mitch Keller, 9-5 with a 3.48 ERA. Christian Scott. He's been mediocre this year in a handful of starts. He does have an issue against the lefties. That's what we come to find out. Um, he's given up a couple runs each and every game as well. But the numbers against lefties, a 310 batting average, a 1.50 uh, whip, a 370 BABIP, and an XFIP at four. So he's going to see five to six lefties. Uh, these aren't great lefties, but he will be seeing five to six lefties in this lineup here uh, for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mitch Keller, on the other hand, he has some struggles against righties, all right? Uh, 269 batting average, uh, 1.37 whip, um, XFIP at 4.68. So with this, what we've seen in this series here, it's been a lot of, uh, of deterioration here with the bullpen of the Pirates, all right? It's been close with the starters. So if you're looking at the first five under, that's what's been going towards what's been happening in this series right now. Because Pittsburgh Pirates, they have a very good rotation 
It's that bullpen that continues to falter each and every night. We saw it on Sunday. Uh, Chapman gave up the lead and the win. Um, so it, it, it continues to happen. And it can happen in this one here. So I'm going to be going with the Mets in this one. Give me the Mets on the money line and give me the under eight and a half. All right. So I expect this to be close. And then in that seven, eight, nine range, this is a already taxed bullpen, which we've been seeing used the last past two days. They're going to have to go to some similar arms here on Monday and it's not going to bode well. So give me Mets and give me the under eight and a half. Next up in Washington, Nationals Park here, 42 and 48 Nationals uh, going to be in St. Louis Cardinals, 47 and 42 here. For the odds, it is even for the Cardinals and Nationals at minus 110 on the money line. Total runs set at nine, okay? For the public bet percentage, we have 67% of the bets on Washington, but 68% of the money on the St. Louis Cardinals. So we have Sharps and public coming in on the side for St. Louis, uh, making them a public underdog. And that's why this line is almost even here. Total runs, 91% of the bets, 76% of the money towards the over nine runs. All right. For the pitching matchup, we have Miles Mikolas, who's six and seven with a 5.19 ERA. Going to be against Mitchell Parker, five and four with a 3.61 ERA. He's been pretty solid this year. Mikolas has been pitching better on the road, but the ERA is still not good at a 4.42. Um, he is giving up a lot of power to righties, a 1.44 uh, home run per nine. So the righties in this lineup here for the Nationals are in a very good spot. Mitchell Park, on, on the other hand, he's been solid, um, but he's seeing uh, some issues against righties. He is a left-handed pitcher. Um, he's giving up power as well to right. He's a 1.38 home run per nine and an exit at 4.04. Okay, so in this game here, a lot of the public is coming in on the Cardinals. Um, I, I see this four-game series coming in as a tie. Um, so give me the Nationals. I'm going to trust Mitchell Parker. I've seen his numbers. Um, it's It's been fine. He's been pitching better at home as well. And I think he can handle this lineup here for the Cardinals. So give me the Nationals. Um, on the money line and give me the over nine runs. Okay, I think uh, this whole entire series has been going over. I think it continues in this one as well. And I think the the bats for the Nats are in a little bit of better spot here against Mikolas, who's been getting hit up here and there. Uh, he does have some bright spots, but he's still been getting up, getting hit up here and there. So Nationals money line over nine runs in Comerica Park here. Detroit Tigers forty two and forty eight going against. Uh, the number one team in AL Central, Cleveland Guardians here, 56 and 32. So a little bit of a division matchup here between these two teams. Guardians are road favorites, minus 150 on the money line with the comeback of the Detroit Tigers at a plus 125. Total runs set at eight and a half. All right. 78% of the bets, 86% of the money on the Guardians here. Uh, total runs, 84% of the bets, 84% of the money towards the over eight and a half. And we have a very, very interesting matchup here. Um, Gavin Williams, uh, who had his one start this year against the, the the Chicago White Sox and got absolutely tattooed. That's why his he's 0-1 with an 11.25 ERA. Going to be against Kiter Montero, 1-2 with a 6.60 ERA. Uh, he's, he's, new up, he's new up to the big leagues as well. Uh, Gavin Williams did pitch last year, and he... He was fine last year. Um, I, it's this maybe this is just a bad first start uh, because he really got hit up by the Chicago White Sox. But he was solid last year. But when you look at his numbers, he did struggle against lefties. He gave up a 1.60 home run per nine, a 1.63 whip against lefties, and an xFIP was at a 5.32. All right, so some of these lefties bats here for the the Detroit Tigers are in good spots, despite the fact this is a team that struggles to score. Okay. Uh, Kyder Montero here, he's he's almost like a gas can. Uh, there, <laughs> uh, he has some major issues against righties. A 4.50 home run per nine, a batting average at 308, um, a whip at 1.83, and an x fip at 5.67. So this one already, just going off these two guys, I do expect Gavin Williams to pitch a little bit better because we've seen uh, his stuff last year and it was pretty solid. Um, so. I like the over just because 
Gavin Williams might have some struggles, and Kyder Montero really is not a good pitcher at all. So over eight and a half there. And I would lean towards the Guardians here and their offense going to begin to Detroit Tigers and their poor offense. So give me the Guardians in this game here on the money line, minus 150. And with these two uh, bad pitchers here, uh, give me the over eight and a half. In the Great American Small Park here, we have the Cincinnati Reds, 42 and 48, going up against the Colorado Rockies, 32 and 58. And this one here, Cincinnati Reds coming off uh, being swept. Uh, after sweeping the Yankees, they just got swept by the Tigers, and now they're going up against the Colorado Rockies. Uh, minus 200 on the money line at home with the comeback of the Rockies at a plus 165. Total runs set at 9.5. For the public bet percentage here, 87% of the bets, 90% of the money all over the Reds. And for the total runs, it's more a little bit 50-50 uh, here. 70% of the bets um, on the over 9.5, but 57% uh, of the money on the over and a half. So uh, Sharps and Public coming in on that under nine and a half in this one. That could be mainly just because of uh, Andrew Abbott. But this starting pitcher matchup here, Ryan Feltner, one and seven with a 5.60 ERA, um, going up against Andrew Abbott, eight and six with a 3.28 ERA. Feltner, um, he does pitch better on the road compared to uh, obviously Colorado. That's a, a offensive haven. But now he's coming to another spot here. This is Cincinnati. This is uh, another situation here, another ballpark that is known for high totals. So uh, from Colorado to Cincinnati, that's not good. So I wouldn't take the road numbers uh, as, a, as a positive here in this spot in Cincinnati. Um, and despite that, he's still giving up some raised numbers against righties. And his XFIP is at a five. So a very high XFIP there for Ryan Feltner. Uh, he's been poor this year as well. Andrew Abbott, on the other hand, has been phenomenal this year and has been great on, on at home and on the road. So it doesn't matter. For Andrew Abbott, he's been very good this year. Um, his only issue is some some slight power to righties. So some power bats here for Colorado could be in a good spot here. But this spot for the Cincinnati Reds coming back home here, uh, first in, facing one of the worst teams in the league here in the Colorado Rockies. Give me the Cincinnati Reds across the board minus 200 on the money line. Give me the Reds minus one and a half on the run spread. And for the total over under, I think they will get to Colorado and score. I don't think Colorado gets to the Reds here. So I'll, I'll go with the public here on that under nine and a half. Next game up in guaranteed uh, rate field here. We have the Chicago White Sox 26 and 66 going up against the Minnesota Twins 51 and 30. Excuse me, 51 and 39. Twins are favorited right now. Roll favorites minus 190 with the comeback of the Chicago White Sox at a plus 155. Total runs are set at nine for the public bet percentage here. 88% of the bets, 99% of the money all over the Minnesota Twins. So if you had, if you were choosing one game that you'd be really scared of, because Chicago White Sox gave away that game on Sunday against the Marlins, uh, this spot here, we'll get into a little bit more, but I'd be super scared of taking the Twins on, on Monday. Letting you know that right now. 99% of the money on the Twins. For the total run, 72% of the bet, 67% of the money towards the over nine runs. Now, they're not showing the pitching matchup, but the pitching matchup that I saw on ESPN is Chris Paddock for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, going up against Chris Flexen for the White Sox, all right? Now, for Chris Paddock, he has huge home road splits. He he has an ERA of 7.84 ERA on the road compared to a home ERA at 3.61. So he's absolutely garbage on the road, uh, Chris Paddock. Um, his numbers against righties, he's given up a 1.80 home run per nine, a, 280 bat, a 283 batting average, a 1.40 whip, and an XFIP at 4.29. Um, and his numbers against lefties, it's a 1.13 home run per nine, a 329 batting average, a 1.75 whip, and a BABIP at 368 to go with an XFIP at five. So this is a gas can on the road here for uh, Chris Paddock. Chris Flexen on the other end here, he hasn't been good a as well. He's been getting hit up almost each and every game. His home ERA is at a 5.25 home uh, home run home ERA, and he has huge issues against lefties. He's given up a home run per nine at a 2.73, a batting average at a 2.76, a WHIP at a 1.45, and a 
and the XFIP is above five at a 5.12. So these two pitchers here are absolutely putrid in this game between uh, the Minnesota Twins and the White Sox here. My favorite play, hands down, is going to be the over nine runs. Give me the over nine runs as, I, I don't want to say lock. I don't want to say lock. As my favorite play. Favorite play on the slate? Over nine and a half, uh, over nine runs in this game here, definitely. Okay, now to choose a winner, I would full. I would, it's just too much money over here. I would go with the White Sox. I expect in this small slate that this would be the spot for the White Sox here. If you want to play it safe, you're still getting a great number. Take the plus one and a half. And as I'm speaking right now, the line was just adjusted to a nine and a half. So it went up already from a nine to a nine and a half. So I highly advise you to take the number now. If you had a nine, good, great, perfect. Try to find a book that's giving out a nine right now. It is moved up to a nine and a half and it's probably going to go up to 10. So over on the total, give me the White Sox plus one and a half. You can still get it at a minus 105 or you want to go for the gusto. Take the plus 155. Love the White Sox here in the total over. Next up in Angel Stadium, we have Los Angeles Angels 37 and 52 going to be against the Texas Rangers 42 and 48. Rangers are road favorites here, minus 145 on that money line with the comeback of the LA Angels at a plus 120. Uh, total run set at eight and a half. All right. Public bet percentage 71% of the bet, 66% of the money towards the Texas Rangers. For the total runs, we have 56% of the bets. 57% of the money towards the over eight and a half, very slightly, okay? For the pitching matchup, John Gray, three and four with a 3.92 ERA, going up against Davis Daniel, one and one with a 2.70 ERA here. John Gray has been pretty decent this year. Uh, no complaints here. He's been very solid. His only issue always when it comes to John Gray is his numbers against lefties, okay? Um, right now, he's giving up power to lefties, a 1.47 home run per nine. The batting average is at a 301. The whip at 1.77. Exit is almost at five, at a 4.95, all right? So, and he's going to see three to four lefties in this lineup. So not five to six, not seven. Some teams throw out seven lefties here. He's going to see around three to four. It's going to be interesting to see. Interesting to see the batting order that, that the Angels come out to. And you got to factor in that this is a poor offense, okay? That might be his weakness, but these aren't very good lefties as well, all right? Davis Daniel, on the other hand, has been solid. Uh, more like not been solid. Let's, let's, not, let's, let's not say solid. He's been very hot and cold, okay? He's got one game because he only had two starts. One game, he dominated the Detroit, Detroit Tigers. In the other game, he got absolutely hit up by the Oakland Athletics. So there's some questions there. And when you go deeper into the numbers, he has issues against righties. All right. He's given up power to righties with a 2.5, uh, a 2.54 home run per nine. And the XFIP is at a 4.13. So with the, the, the pitcher, I think that's in a better spot here. John Gray going up against this Angels offense. Davis Daniel has been solid, but very, very could be erratic. I need more data on him because if you pitch good against Detroit Tigers, granted, they're not good offense. And then you get hit up by the Oakland Athletics. They're really not a good offense as well. Uh, but they do definitely hit home runs. And this is a Texas Rangers team that has a lot of power. Give me the Rangers and John Gray on the money line. And if I had to go towards an over under, I would go with the under eight and a half here between these two teams. Last but not least, we're going to be in a chase field here. Arizona Diamondbacks. All right. Um, against the Atlanta Braves. Diamondbacks are 45 and 45. Braves are 49 and 39 here for the odds. Braves are road favorites minus 210 on the money line with the comeback of the Arizona Diamondbacks at plus 170. Total runs are set at eight. All right. Now for the public bet percentage, 90% of the bets on the Braves, but 61% of the money on the Braves. So, so more percentages coming in um, on Arizona sharps in public coming in on uh, Arizona money line there with the money. Um, so that's very interesting to see here. Total runs, 89% of the bets, 85% of the money towards the over eight runs in this one. And, and in this pitching matchup here, Chris Sale is 11 and three with a 2.71 ERA going up against Yilbert Diaz. All right. Now there's no information on Yilbert Diaz on fan graphs. So I had to go to the minors 
uh, that's where Yilbert Diaz was in his um, his uh, minor league numbers. His ERA is at a 4.03. His WHIP is at a 1.24 WHIP, um, and he has very very good strikeout stuff. So I saw what was it like 76 innings, but like 105 strikeouts. So that was pretty. It was pretty good uh, with the strikeout stuff. But we got ERA with a four in the minor leagues isn't good. WHIP at 1.2. That's that's okay. And his batting average he was giving up was around 200. Um, that's fine and dandy, but we're talking about the Atlanta Braves and this offense here. Now, this could be a surprise spot. They have not seen Yilbert Diaz, but we're coming into a situation here where I talked about over and over again, these Diamondback pitchers pitching at home, and this is a very offensive-minded ballpark here. So we got the bats of the Braves going to be against a minor leaguer here in his first start in an environment where a lot of runs tend to happen going up against an elite elite pitcher in chris sale so this does not bode well for their arizona diamondbacks at all so i'm gonna go with what's what's it telling me it's just common sense here give me atlanta braves my uh minus 210 on the money line give me braves minus one and a half give me the over eight runs it could be one-sided here it could be all Braves scoring all the runs i don't care it could definitely probably happen because how strong this offense is and they're probably wake waiting to wake up finally and they just handled the philadelphia phillies as well so Braves here money line Braves minus one and a half over eight runs in this spot that's going to be our selections for the monday slate let me know in that comment section down below what are your uh, your leans for this slate. Are you going to agree? Are you going to disagree with what I've already put out on this video? Uh, let me know some props as well. So, Or you just want to shout out and say what's up. Let me know in that comment section down below. Uh, also, if you want to sign up for the Patreon, remember, we have daily bets. We have future bets. And you get access to the community as well in that chat. So sign up right now for that Patreon. And I'll be back with another video very soon. All right. Peace out.